Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Marvelous Monday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I wanted to do some heat embossing today because I've got to get ready a little more prepared. I've already done a lot, but I still have a little more to go for the tag swaps. And today I wanted to do some heat embossing and I thought it would be a really good chance to open up the new embossing additions tool kit, which I haven't even looked at yet. So let's see what this is like. I'll post all the links below for all of the things that I use today. So if you see something that you like, you'll be able to get it from my online store. And if you use the host code, then you'll also have the chance to get a um, a little gift from me with your orders of $50 or more. So I'm just going to take all the pieces out. So we've got a very nice pair of tweezers here and it looks like they've got these uh, fancy tips and I'm not sure if this, this may be a heat resistant tip. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'll have to do a little research. But my first guess would be that it was some kind of a silicone heat resistant tip. And then we've got a little embossing buddy pillow here. Now I already have one of these opened because I've got my old one. And I just keep it in this little box that I got at the store. And, um, and it's basically like a little pumice pillow. And so you just pounce it on your surface to remove any extra grease or dust or static electricity. So I'm going to keep my new one aside since we don't need, need that right away. And then it comes with this cute little brush. Now when I brush away, and I'm going to demonstrate in a few minutes, but typically I'll use a oil painters bristle brush okay that has a kind of a small flat this is called a filbert this kind of a brush tip this is a little big for me for brushing away bits of um, excess powder I think I'm going to stick with the smaller brush but this little brush would actually be perfect for applying gesso or glue. Okay, it would make a very nice little glue brush and, it's, and it seems to be a well-made brush. It's just a little bit too big for what um, the fine work that I do with the embossing powder. And these things are really cool. This is just a little tray. It has a cap on the end of it so that you can just uh, use the bottom as a funnel to tap the powder back inside one of those little tiny jars. So this is really handy to have. I, I have a couple of these. Um, I don't always use them because many times I decant my embossing powder into a tub like this. And then I have a, a spoon at the top so that I can just sprinkle my powder like so. But I'm going to demonstrate this one today. I'll probably use both because I have to do quite a bit of embossing and I also want to do a little bit of experimenting. So let me just check my settings, make sure we're good to go here. Oh, and my computer seems to be frozen. I hope you can see me all right. Let me, there we go. Now it's, now it's caught up. And yes, we are visible. And there's people out there. Good morning, Kelly. Hi, Carol. Hey, Linda. That big brush is good for brushing the powder in the tray. Oh, good idea. Yeah, okay, well that makes sense. All right, so what Linda's saying is that once the powder's in the tray and you want to scoot it down into the funnel, you could do that. So yeah, that's a great point. 
so let's uh, let's see. We've got some instruction here. Oh yeah, you see if you look at the instructions, there's the brush scooting the powder down into the funnel, and. Apparently, it says the crafting tweezer tips are ceramic and will get hot when used with a heat tool. Please take care when handling. Okay, yeah. So if you're if you're if the ceramic tip of the tweezers does get good and hot, you want to make sure that you have something that you can put it down on. Maybe just turn it up like that something that's metal or glass so that you're not going to melt any plastic. All right, let's get started. Let's see what we've got here. I have two kinds of embossing, embossing powder. I've got white and I've got clear. Um, I think I'm going to end up using the white though, not the clear. I'm going to be using this stamp set called Pretty Medallion which is it's a beautiful sort of a mandala, but it also has six points. So I thought that we could um, use it as a snowflake motif as well. So I haven't used it yet. So here it is. And does this have a coating on it? Oh, it does. Okay, so we're gonna peel that away. Gonna get out my big block. This is an oversized stamp. This is bigger than a standard size note card, which I like very much because uh, you can then use it on on say you're making a if you're making a bigger um, box or something like that with a and you need a um, something larger. So it's actually, let's see what it is. The outside dimension is about four and three quarters. And from top to bottom, it's almost six, not quite. It's five and three quarters. And the shape of the mandala itself is about five from point to point and four and a half from side to side. Now for paper, I've got a selection. So I've got some of the shimmer white paper. I've got the thick, very vanilla cardstock. I've got the thick, basic white. And I've got some seaside spray blue here. I'm going to start with this scrap of the shimmer white. And for this one, I'm going to be embossing with gold. So I'll get my embossing buddy out. Give my paper a quick rub down. And I'm using the Versamark ink. This is going to act as a glue to make the powder stick to the um, stamped image. Make sure I've got, I probably, if I thought ahead of time, I probably should have refilled my Versamark. I think it's okay, but I have been using it a lot, so it's probably ready to get a little topping off. So there we go. I'm going to get my piercing mat out for this, so I have a little bit of an extra cushion underneath there. And I'm just going to do this in the corner. Give that a good press. This is my this is my gold bucket. I'm 
Oh, and Cheryl says the brush can also brush excess powder from around the design be before heating. Yeah, um, Cheryl, we talk, we did talk about that. That's why I prefer actually the smaller brush because a lot of times you have to get into some very little spaces. Okay, let me see which corner my design is in here. I'm going to have to do this a couple of times. Okay, so we'll use, we'll start off with the big brush. Get rid of some of that excess powder. And actually this looks pretty clean because I did use the embossing body, so I don't see a lot of extra dust. Now I am going to turn on my heat tool. It's going to get noisy. So I'm going to turn the sound off for just a minute while I'm using the heat tool. So um, if you want to go get yourself a cup of coffee, then now's your chance. Okay, so there it is, and it is gorgeous. Wow, really very, very pretty. Now, I think I've got enough room here to squeeze another one on. This time I'm going to use the clear because this is the shimmer white paper, and therefore um, I will be able to just move a little space here. I will be able to put a light wash on there with my watercolors. So, so I want to use the clear to um, make a kind of a resist for my image, meaning that the watercolor will go everywhere except where the image is stamped. So same, same thing here. And let's see if I can do this without overlapping. Now, it may overlap a tiny bit, but that's okay because I'm going to cut these out and turn them into um, smaller pieces anyway. So. Hopefully it won't, but if it does, it's okay. All right, so this time I'm using the clear, and it looks like I didn't overlap, which is nice. Let's 
This one's clear. Now my partner Lawrence is a seed saver. He's a, he's a ethnobotanist and he specializes in heirloom vegetable seeds. And he likes, I let him use one of my little trays like this for, um, for cleaning seeds from tomato plants and it worked beautifully. He loved it. So if you know somebody in your life who's a gardener who likes to do seed saving, these little trays are also great for that. All right, now I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well, but it looks really pretty. So um, I'm going to tap the back. I'm going to collect my powder. I made a mess already. Surprise, surprise. Send that in there. Yeah, this brush actually works great for this. So um, thank you, Linda, for pointing that out. This works very well for, for this purpose. I'm still making a mess, though. <laughs> I, I am a sloppy crafter. You'll be much neater. Okay, now let's see if I can pick up this little pile over here. That's better. All right, make sure you cover up your powder so it doesn't blow all over the place. And now I'm going to um, turn my heat tool on again. All right, so I can just make out um, a little bit where the shine is, where the edges of that design are on the paper. And um, I'm going to put this aside now to cool off. And while that's cooling off, I'm going to grab another color. I'm going to use this one. Let me just scrape away. You know, I find that my uh, little metal ruler makes a very good table scraper, like they have in the um, white tablecloth restaurants. So if you happen to have one of these, it works well for cleaning up your surface. Okay, so this time, I think I'm going to go back to the gold. So... Actually, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one in white. I want I want to see how um, how this looks 
as a snowflake. And actually, you know what? I'm going to, since I've got a full size sheet here, I think what I'll do is I'll see if I can get a couple on here. So I'm going to get this right up in the corner. Hi, Ginger. Ginger's joining us from California, which means that it's she's right in the middle of her morning. I'm going to do it one more time. Make sure I get this pad under the entire image here. I just made it. Okay, so if you're really careful, it is possible to get three of these full-size images on your paper without touching, but I have to tell you, um, it's close, really close. So let's just go ahead and put our white powder in the tray now. This one's white. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I do have to brush away a little bit of the excess, but I just want to make sure I've got good coverage. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to give that a good tapping off. Make sure I don't put my finger in there. my little brush. Here it is. Okay. All 
right now on this one I do have a little excess powder over in this corner that I want to brush away <clears throat> but I also have some little places I want to get into so I'm going to switch to my I don't know if you can see I'm just going to very gently come in as close as I can Okay. Oh, here's a spot. Let's get this. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to turn on the heat tool once again. Okay, I think I got got it all. 
and I have to say that this stamp is just beautiful. I mean, these designs look like lace. They're just gorgeous. And, um, and the white on this sea spray looks like Wedgwood. I mean, it's just, it's just a really wonderful effect. And if you're a new crafter and you haven't tried heat embossing yet, I would really recommend that you give it a try. The, uh, the heat tool is relatively inexpensive. It's about $30. And, um, and you just use whatever stamps you already have. You just need to use the uh, Versamark ink when you're making your impression. And you get this beautiful, beautiful effect. Now, I don't know if the camera will pick up the sheen. Let's see if I bend it a little bit. A little bit. I think you can see that. Okay, so, so there is my, um, what I'm calling a snowflake design in this case. And let me bring back my gold embossed one. Here's the, here's the gold heat embossed. Okay, and uh, you're not going to be able to see this one because this one I'm going to be adding watercolor to and I'm not going to do that today. But let's, um, let's do one more and then that'll be it. I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to grab the next piece of paper which happens to be my very vanilla thick cardstock. And oh, use my embossing buddy. It's easy to forget, but as soon as uh, you start getting powder all over the place, you'll wish that you had done it. Now I'm just going to do one because I don't want to take too much more of your time. my pad. And I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on here. Okay. There's my one, and this time I will do it in, let me think, um, oh, it's a tough decision. Okay, I think I, what I'll do is I'll use the white this time. It's clear. Houdini complaining about the noise. Okay, okay, buddy. It's a little rainy out there today. I didn't put him out earlier because it's just, it's kind of gloomy. But 
he will go out this afternoon. Okay. All right, folks, so this is going to be the last time I mute you today, so thank you for your patience. All right, so I think you can see the, a little bit on there. It looks really beautiful. So now what I wanna do, let me just scrape away some of this excess. All right, so I've got my scrap paper here. And I've got a, um, I've got my Seaside Spray ink. Now what I want to get is a blending brush. So I've got my blending brush here. Okay, so what I want to do is, I just, let me put this this way so you can see better. All right, I'm going to start in the middle, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap my brush in the ink, and then I'm going to take off a little bit of the excess, and then very softly I'm going to begin in the middle, and I'm just going to gently make a very soft kind of a um, glow, kind of a blue glow from the center here. I'm going to keep working it that way. And as I get further and further out from the center, I'm going to let that get softer and lighter. And this is, this is what makes these blending brushes so great to use because you can get these very soft effects which um, for, for a project like this are just perfect. I'm just going to bring that out to the edge until it disappears. 
at this side. And there's my design. A little bit darker over here. Okay. So there is my beautiful snowflake emerging softly from the background. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the rest of this page like that. So I'll be able to put another image here and another image here, and then maybe I'll put some partials on the edges. But you don't have to watch me do that. I just wanted to share some of these ideas with you. Okay, for using the pretty medallion stamp set with the heat embossing. So there's three really pretty ways that you could use it. And, um, and I haven't yet done the watercolor one because that's going to take a little bit longer. But I think you get the idea. All right, folks. Well, thank you for joining me today. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next right here on Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for Watercolor Wednesday.